Hey everybody, what up? All right, so I'm gonna make a video about, I think, uh, the best learning strategy to become a programmer. And this is uh, really, like, I guess if I could have started over, and in some ways, this is actually what I did and it seemed to have worked out for me, but uh, I may be an exception to the rule. I mean, the market's changed, you know, even um, since I've joined it 15 years ago, but let's go ahead and talk about this, right? Um, I like this quote from Thomas Edison. He, um, he said, I've not failed a thousand times. I, I successfully discovered a thousand ways not to make the light bulb. So what's interesting about that is like, I feel like that's the case with programming. A lot of times like we'll hear from people like, oh, you got to study your algorithms, traverse a binary tree, learn about data structures and all this and that. Um, I think the problem is though, is even if you did do that, which is probably a requirement to get through most job interviews these days, um, Nobody's going to hire you anyway, like unless you have a college degree or you're in college or you have products out there. So I've always said start with actually coming up with a website idea. So I think the easiest path if you really want to be a paid programmer is probably going to, to go website development and then maybe transition into like mobile app development or game development should you want to do that. But most of the jobs are in like websites, cloud hosting, uh, infrastructure, stuff like that. So in my in my opinion, the best way is to come up with a project idea. And that is like a website idea. That is something that you have a, like a remote interest in because if you're not interested in it, you're gonna probably fizzle out pretty quickly after you get started. And this type of an endeavor takes a long time and you're gonna fail a thousand times. And when I say fail a thousand times, it's not on like your business idea, but like, you know, things that you, you're like, oh, I want it to do it. You know, I want the website to do this. And then there's this interactivity and like, you're gonna fail a bunch of times, but that's how you learn. Um, so come up with an idea of something that you care about. And then I say start with HTML and CSS. I mean, that's where everything is. So here we're looking at HTML, CSS on the right-hand side. Start to learn those. You don't really need any other tools or anything like that. Learn how to style your page and become good at that using just regular HTML and CSS. You could even put it all in one, in one file if you want. Um, but ultimately, you're going to end up learning how to separate your CSS from your HTML and your JavaScript from your HTML. And, uh, and then eventually, you're going to write a tool that writes your HTML for you. Um, so that said, though, I do think that that is like an easy way to start. It's an easy way to see that instant feedback. And from there, then you pick one server-side language. And there's so many different server-side languages. Like we talk about C Sharp versus Java versus Python versus PHP. I think that when it comes down to it, you're going to have to learn JavaScript anyway. Um, so you need to choose between either JavaScript or TypeScript. And the, t the difference between the two is that TypeScript is going to be a little bit harder, I think, for the beginner to pick up. However, it's much more widely used these days in the wild. So if you're looking to get a job, that's probably the best bet to go. But that said, it's going to be a little bit more of a learning curve initially. And then from there, you need to pick, um, you know, the server side language. So in my, in my opinion, you go with Node.js because both JavaScript and TypeScript run on Node. So Node itself is just like a runtime. Uh, it's, it's considered to be your web, your server side language. I mean, it's used by all kinds of di different corporate Fortune 500s. And there's tons of jobs. There's tons of frameworks for it. Ultimately, that is your server side code. And you can use either JavaScript or TypeScript to write it. So since you have to learn that anyway, then I think it's probably the best as a first language. So a lot of people will say, maybe do Python because it's, you know, it's beginner friendly and um, you know, really popular, but you're gonna have to then learn an entire separate Python ecosystem in order to get a server side stack running when you already are taking on a lot. So my next opinion is that you create a flat file system um, for your database. You need to actually organize your data in some sort of way. Like here's a, a website that if uh, if I log in here, like th this is all data, it's coming from a database, but however, you don't have to have it come from a database right away. You could write and map out your data where it's actually being stored in just separate folders and files. And you just simply read from the folders and files and, and versus actually querying a database. And the only reason why I suggest that is because you do end up getting caught up in a lot of like, if you add too much tooling early on, then it really does delay your development process and you might decide, hey, I don't want to do this project at all. So don't deal with the headaches of dealing with a database until you have your data right. Uh, but then after you do that, I would suggest that you probably pick a database language, uh, or I'm sorry, a database server, 
And for that, I would definitely say MongoDB. I'm using that personally, but it is very easy to use because it's um, once you learn JavaScript and JavaScript objects, whether you're using TypeScript or JavaScript, you'll find that dealing with MongoDB is very similar to that. So that'll save you time too. All right, so then you have now your HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You have your server-side code. You have your database. Um, next, I would say that you want to actually be able to show people your projects. So you need to have your data backed up. And that's one of the things. I actually lit a hard drive on fire one time and lost a bunch of work. I didn't have it backed up properly. Uh, in, in that case, Git wouldn't have helped me because I fried the whole hard drive. But Git also can connect to you know GitHub. So GitHub is run using the Git language. Git just keeps track of all the different versions of your files. And, and as you continue to build the project, if you screw something up, you're going to screw things up when you're getting started. So you want to be able to backtrack as easy as possible. Instead of saving a bunch of different versions all over the file, that's what are all over your file system. That's what Git is doing anyway. It's technically behind the scenes. It's written in C by Linus Torvalds, but it's literally just saving copies of your work. So then in case you light your hard drive on fire like I did that one time, um, then it's also good to have Git synced to GitHub. So basically you'll be doing work on your local machine. You use Git to keep track of all that. And then you also use Git to keep um, your GitHub server, your username on GitHub in sync with your local code base. So even if you do light it on fire, you would then have to have all of GitHub go down to lose your data too. Um, another thing too is that with a lot of this stuff, I don't think you have to be an expert in any one of them. Like you don't have to learn every single thing about HTML and master like tables and um, you know how to do ad. Basically, HTML is very simple, right? CSS is something that is um, simple when you first get started, but there's so many nuances of how CSS is rendering, cas how it cascades, how like there's um, there's precedent, not precedent, but um, specificity same sort of thing uh, but all that said like there's a lot of quirks and things like that so i don't think you have to master that in order to move on to the next thing i think you just have to know it enough to be able to plug and play these things together when i was first getting started one of the first things i was told was that you don't reinvent the wheel so i was thinking learning was all about data structures i have to learn about all the, you know the primitive types and the data structures and and how to traverse the binary trees and all that and deal with all the algorithms and we don't deal with that really day to day it's more of tying all these different pieces together and things move so quickly it is very difficult to become a master in any one thing uh, let alone a bunch of them so even as a professional developer you typically will find that people will get slotted into certain areas where they excel at or that they want to learn uh, but they're not expected to be an expert in every every tool that a company uses because there's just too many you would be a jack of all trades and a master of none. So in programming and especially in the corporate world, you got to have people that really know the tools back, you know, front and back. But that takes time and a lot of effort, and it's just simply not possible to do when you're dealing with hundreds of technologies. All right, so the next thing is that you probably want to learn a cloud hosting provider. You're not going to run a server from your, web, from your home. Um, people just don't do that for the most part anymore, not that I've ever been aware of in the 15 years I've been doing this. I know it's possible, but just most people don't. Um, I've been using Linode for a long time. I was using Shared Host before that. I've had experience uh, with Azure and AWS, Google App Engine back when it used to be called that, which it's not even called that anymore. Um, but all those tools, they're going to be using operating systems, most likely a, a flavor of Linux. So even if you're on Windows like I've been for personal development, I use a MacBook Pro professionally, but I also, all my servers and everything are on Linux Ubuntu. So that is just the flavor of Linux that I chose to use. But there's no operating system. So I'll like SSH into my server, my virtual private host. And then from there though, it's all the command line terminal. So it's the terminal in Mac. It's basically the command prompt in Windows. And you have to learn how to navigate yourself around, you know, how to copy files, create symbolic links, how to um, create little bash scripts and things to uh, upload maybe files to your server. Um, th there's how to restart your server, maybe how, you know, tap into Git hooks and things like that. But um, the point being, though, is that even getting your, fo your files onto the server, I mean, a lot of that's going to be you, you should use like Git or something to pull it down. There's many ways of doing it. You could use FileZilla and just upload the files if you want. Um, you could write a Python script and upload your files that way. 
But all that said, you have to understand the the terminal. Like so, that's considered bash. It's considered PowerShell with Windows. Um, get, getting good, you don't again have to be a master. I think you could do that for ten years and still not be considered a master at it. Um, but you do have to learn some of the basics because that will be required. So just simply setting up your server, your firewall rules, um, dealing with logging and re reviewing your log files and all that stuff, that's going to require knowledge of Bash or PowerShell. And like I said, that's considered the terminal. All right, so the next thing I would recommend is that once you have all that running and you actually have your basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript website, with your database running on the server, it's going to be a similar thing to your local development, but there will be a few extra hurdles and headaches that you have to do to get that set up on your server. But ultimately, it's the same thing. Then you're ready to like move into, I think, like a client-side library like React or Vue or Angular or any number of, of, of them that will come out in the future. So this will then take over writing your HTML. And when it comes to having a very dynamic user interface you know where you type things and and that the dom is changing in this case uh yeah it's just simply rendering but anyway you can see that the the dom is updating as the seconds are counting like that is a combination of javascript and then also using a framework to inject new pieces of data as html into your your project your user interface there so I think that if you started here you know you're kind of pigeonholing yourself into like just simply understanding the UI portion and, and specifically how React deals with UIs. Um, I, I, for me, if I were starting over, I, I wouldn't start with that. I would I would start with everything I mentioned first before moving to something like this. But then you know it will become necessary because pretty much every web development job you're going to have, you're going to probably run into some of this stuff. And I think we're seeing more full stack development versus people that just focus on back end or just focus on front end. All right, and then after you got all of that running, React is all about, it's all about stateful UI. Um, you know, communicating with your server, maybe your server's communicating with other servers to get the latest Bitcoin price or something like in real time. But you don't want that to have to reload the page every time a piece of your data changes. So if you're communicating with your server and that's communicating with a database, and maybe that's communicating with other servers as well, there's a process that is called Ajax. And what that is, is we now have libraries like Fetch, but you want to learn about Ajax and how to make Ajax calls, which are asynchronous calls to your backend, which doesn't require the web page to reload. It's about how we do everything with microservices these days. It's how single page applications work. Even if you're not dealing with a single page application, which I would also recommend probably don't do that on your first project but you can still have your app even if it's a traditional mvc model view, view controller web application you could still have it behave very much like a single page app without a lot of the complexities and headache if you know how to master one of these libraries like react with asynchronous ajax calls finally after you do all of that stuff and this is probably going to take you i mean it, it if if you do this path i do think it'll save you some time but uh, I, I would guess that just depending on how much free time you have, if you have any life at all, it's going to take years. Um, but if you have all the time in the world to devote to it, maybe you can do it in six months a year. But you want to get these projects out there that you can then talk about in the job interviews. And then at that point, maybe start studying how to pass the algorithms and do the fizz buzz tests and all of that stuff. But we don't really deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. And even if you do master that initially, you're not going to, it's not really going to help you. I don't think when you get into the business world and then, you know, there's plenty of other little buzzword technologies that you can deal with later on. If you don't use Linode, you know, maybe you want to use AWS or Azure. It's going to cost you more money. There's definitely more jobs in those fields, but ultimately behind the scenes, um, it is about, you know, cloud hosting infrastructure. And I do think something like Linode requires that you have to have a much deeper understanding of, the Ubuntu operating system and the tools that that um, are being installed versus relying on Amazon's, you know, click a few buttons here and spin up a bunch of, um, you know, processes and, and virtual machines and such. Um, so that is where a lot of the cloud infrastructure is. But I mean, I would say that, you know, something like that, I would put on the back burner until, you know, you're very comfortable 
uh, with all this previous stuff that I just mentioned. So the list could go on, honestly. Um, I'm going to cut this video off at this point. I'm curious uh, what, what you all think. I mean, what is really the best path to learn? Um, these are all the things that I think that you have to know in order to actually have a good project on, uh, off the ground, one that you could talk about, one that you could eventually get your application in front of other people, and then, you know, hopefully you could pass, you know, the, the coding challenges, which are a real pain in the ass, but it's just the way it is. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, smash that bell, whatever. That's what people say, right? Um, yeah, anyway, thanks for the support, though. Have a good day. Bye. All right, so if you're learning how to code, if you've seen my latest videos, you know I got a little bit of time on my hands these days. I got to figure out what to do, maybe a little chip on my shoulder again, whatever. I use that to fuel. Uh, but yeah, either way, I, I plan on um, putting a little bit more effort into this. I'm going to try to make it better. I already got like 45 plus courses there. There's going to be more. I'm going to update some of the existings, replace some of them, add new ones. It's going to continue to grow. I'm adding a, a podcast. I'm adding more and more to it. I'm a self-taught developer. I'll teach you everything I know. Check it out. It's one price for everything.